Welcome to the Stutzman channel. My name is Terry. Now if you have an air conditioner or a heat pump, and specifically if you have, of course, you're going to have an indoor air handling unit. And on that unit, you're going to have a motor. Nowadays, most modern uh, units is going to have an electronically commutated motor on there. Now this thing is very expensive. You've got an electronic module on the, on the end of the motor, and of course you have the motor itself. And basically it's a three-phase DC motor. So you have a control board that's sending pulses to control the speed of the motor, which gives it a constant torque no matter which one of these speeds that you're set at. Bottom line is this is an expensive uh, unit. Whether you get the board by itself or you get the motor or if you get it both together. So it'll probably run you eight, maybe nine hundred dollars if you get the whole entire thing here. Now, give you my little story here. A few nights ago, the wife and I were sitting on the couch, we were watching TV, and about 8 o'clock at night, I said, damn, it's getting hot. So I got up, I looked at the thermostat, and it was 80, and I had it set for 73. So I knew right then something was going on. So I go out, I look, I can see the compressor is not running. All right, so my first thought is that it's probably a run capacitor. And it was getting late, it's dark, so I said, okay, I'll just check it in the morning. So I'll go out there in the morning, I had a spare capacitor, I checked it. Should be 40 microfarads for the compressor, turns out it's 28.2 microfarads. Okay, I replaced the capacitor. And then the compressor, it started up. Come back in the house, I checked over the vents to see if I had airflow. Nope, no airflow. Now I had another problem, and this is where we're at right now. So it turns out I've already checked the motor, it's good. I checked and then it left us up with this here uh, electronic control module. Well, it turns out that this here electronic con uh, control module, I had replaced it five years ago. I got it from eBay for a hundred bucks, so you know, it done is done pretty good, five years. Uh, so it turns out we're gonna have to replace this thing again. Now there's a few things that I picked up on this one. I bought a new one. And I bought this from uh, supplyhouse.com. It'll run you about 380 bucks for this, just this control module. And, uh, and of course you got your tax, but I believe the shipping was free. So anyway, there's a few things that in the instructions that I thought was interesting. That's the point of this video, so which can be helpful to you. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, control module here. Okay, so here's the unit that I got. This is a one half horsepower. 230 volts. It's an X13 motor, Gentech, and here's a part number for me, which is a 6205 ECTL. Okay, let's take a look in here to see what we have. All right, so you're going to get this right here. It's going to be a little decal, and it's going to be showing you when it was replaced, and also the pre-programmed taps. And that will go over that just a little bit too. Also, you're going to get a connector. You get some uh, fast on terminals. And we'll get our instructions, which we'll go over that a little bit. And then here is the unit itself. For the ones that's not familiar with it, this here is this uh, electronic control module, and it mounts to the back of the motor. Okay? So now let's go over the uh, instructions a little bit. All right, let's go over this here little decal on what it's representing for us, these terminals on this uh, connectors. There's two connectors. One is at the top. This is pretty much for your line power that's coming in. And the bottom terminals is for your control uh, voltage that's coming in to tell it what speed to run at. All right, now if you notice here on the top, this is a C. The C is for common, so we're going to use this one terminal for the common and then one of these signals or 24 volts is coming in to tell it what speed to run at. Now you can also put in 18 volt DC but most of the time you're going to find out that you, since uh, you have a control transformer 24 volt AC that's what you're going to see on one of these here taps to select a speed. Now if we go back up here on the top we got an L, G and an N the G is going to be for equipment ground. L and N could be 120 volts, or L and N could be 208 to 230 volts. In my case, it's 230 volts. Now, getting back down to these terminals for the speed taps, 
If we look at number one, we can see it says low speed. So if I put 24 volts on here and the C terminal, then I'm going to get a low speed coming out of this here motor. If I come down to number two, I can see that number two says medium low. So common and two will give me a medium low. Three is going to be a medium speed. Again, of course, I need my common. Four, medium high. And then number five is going to be a high speed. Now, the thing about this unit is it comes pre-programmed with all of these speeds. So it's not like, uh, you know, you get it from the manufacturer. Maybe he has one speed that's uh, programmed in. Uh, you might say get something off eBay. Maybe they programmed it for another speed. So you know this way you can pro you can you can put your taps on to whatever how it is right now with the manufacturer. In my case, I only have one wire and it's on number four, and that's going to be for a medium high speed. It's kind of a little bit of compensation between heat and cool. So you know if you're going with cool air or air conditioned air, you got to have a higher velocity or higher speed. And of course, if you're going the other way and you're going to have heat, then you're going to have a bit of a little slower speed. So you may have, you know, two taps on here, one for heat, one for cool. But I said in my case, I only have one. So that right there pretty much takes care of the connectors. Now this is an instruction manual, and I'm sure you're not going to be able to read this, but uh, this basically this is a table right here for the uh, all the different models that they have. And like I said, mine is a half horsepower, so it's this unit here. If you have a different one, of course, you have different horsepowers and different voltage ratings. So basically, you don't need to pick it out to what current it is or what uh, RPM it is. You pick out your horsepower and you pick out your voltage. And that's illustrated also on the website, you know, at uh, supplyhouse.com. Now, this is just kind of like an illustration of these connectors. Uh, you may say here you may have a circuit board and you're having uh, more than one tap, speed tap that you're using. So for example, you can see they're using a common and of course you have your line power coming in and then you got your 24 volt heat and your 24 volt cool. Now of course you're not going to be using both of these signals at one time, the 24 volts. It's going to be one tap at a time. And so for the 24 volt heat, you can see they're feeding it up to uh, it looks like number three. Number three is for a medium speed and then for the 24 volts that's going to go for the cool That's going to number five and you can see that's the high speed as I mentioned earlier You want a higher speed for a cool there All right getting to the best part of this video. This is the first part and in there it'll be a second part When you buy when you buy one of these here motors new or the control board I should say when you buy a control board this new and it's never been used the, the control board does not know to tell, the, tell the motor which direction to turn. So that is not programmed in here. So what it's going to do is you will, you will hook it up, you will turn it on, and what will happen is it will the motor will start up in some direction. It will run for a few seconds, it will stop, it will reverse rotation, and it can do this up to four times. And then at this point, then it's determined what is the correct rotation, and then it's going to lock it in, and at that point, it is and it is done. Now, if it cannot figure out which is the correct uh, direction, what it's going to do is it's going to set it into a counterclockwise direction looking at the lead end of the motor. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read it because you probably can't read this here because it's probably too uh, small. Rotation sensing. The first time the Evergreen EM control, uh, control module is powered up and receives a signal on one of the 24 volt AC speed taps, it will perform a rotation sensing process. With this feature, the motor will automatically determine the proper operating direction of the blower wheel by running the motor for several seconds in each direction. And then it says, do not turn off the power to the HVAC unit until the motor continues to run in one direction. During rotation sensing, the, the motor will run in both directions, up to four times if necessary, to determine the proper operating direction. If the proper direction cannot be determined after the fourth sequence, the motor will operate in the default direction of counterclockwise lead-in. Now, when the motor continues to run in one direction and increases in speed, 
Rotation sensing is complete and the feature is locked out. The motor will continue to start and run in this direction without performing rotation sensing even if the line voltage power is disconnected. So, if you get a motor, I mean a control board say from eBay, one that's been used, that motor is already programmed with this rotation which could be backwards from yours. Now in a, uh, the video five years ago that I did when I replaced the control module, the, the motor did run backwards. In my case what I did is I reversed two of the uh, three phase wires and then that made it go in the other direction. But we're going to get up to something here that I found interesting that you don't need to do that and it's in this here procedure how you can reverse the rotation of that motor. Now again I'm not sure how well this will show up so I'm going to just read it to you. This is the procedure to changing the rotation of the Evergreen EM control module. If the motor has been running for more than one minute continuously in the same direction while mounted in the blower section the following instructions will reverse the motor. First it says turn off the main power disconnect to the HVAC unit Leave terminal C, L, G, and N connected to the HVAC system. So in other words, it needs, it needs the power, of course. And it needs that C for the common for one side of the 24 volt AC. Now, disconnect all of the 24 volt AC speed tap connectors in terminals 1 through 5. Remember, these are the ones that's on the very bottom. The ones on the top is for the line. Now it says build a harness to connect only terminals 1, 3, and 5 to the thermostat or connection or similar 24 volt AC power supply. In my case, if I had to do this, I would just get a transformer and I would just use that, you know, 24 volt AC transformer. Now it says uh, turn on the main power disconnect to the HVAC unit. Set a stop switch and set a stopwatch for five minutes. Note, during the five minutes, the motor may briefly try to start, but should not run. When more than five minutes has passed, turn off the main power disconnect to the HVAC unit. Now set a stopwatch for three minutes. Reconfigure the 24-8 volt AC speed tap connections to the control relays or circuit board or up for normal operation. So in other words, put it back to where it should be, you know, to where it should be normally wired. Now when more than three minutes has passed, turn on the main power disconnect to the HVAC unit. Set the thermostat to any demand. The next time the motor is energized, it will operate in the opposite direction. So I thought that was... Uh, that was pretty interesting about how you can send 24 volts to one, uh, three, and five at the same time. You know, give it a few minutes according to what the directions I said, and that'll make this uh, motor go back in the opposite direction. Okay, now let's go ahead and we'll get this thing uh, installed. Now, I should point out before you take the motor out, what I've done is I have the compressor. And the condenser fan will not start because I have it in the off position. And then, right now, the fan would normally be in the auto position, but I have it in the on position. So just the fan will run. All right, so now let's go down there and get this thing installed. Now what I showed you up there on the thermostat was for the 24 volt control. That is not going to take care of the line voltage. So you'll have a unit somewhere similar to this, and I have a pool handle and it's pulled out. So you want to make sure that your power is off before you start taking this uh, unit out. All right, we're up underneath the house now. So hopefully, uh, I got my headlight here. Hopefully you can see a little bit here because it is dark. All right, so we're going to take out these two bolts. I've already loosened them up. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to lift this straight up. And then we're going to see that we have this connector. So we're going to take this connector off. And you can see there's the three wires for the three-phase motor that I was talking about earlier. So we're going to set him off to the side. And now we're going to plug this one up. And it is keyed, so it can only go in one way. Alright, so we got him plugged up. And now, let's go ahead and... 
put him down. Making sure that all our wires look okay. And they do. Make sure they're not pinched or anything like that. Alright. Now, in the kit here, when you buy this module, you do get new bolts. So, we are going to use them. I'm using a quarter inch nut driver to secure the bolts here. Alright, now I gotta take this and I gotta install it. So I'll catch you guys in the next shot when I get it installed. Alright, I have the unit back in. Connectors are uh, plugged in. And now what we're going to do is before I power it up, is I'm going to take and I'm going to put this here cover in place. Because you remember, what it's going to do now is it's going to sense the rotation. It's going to go one direction, then it's going to stop, and then it's going to go back. Now what it's going to be doing there is it's looking at the current of the motor. Now when the air flowing is correct, you're going to have the most amount of current. And then that's what it's going to set it to. Now when you go backwards, you're not going to have the airflow, and then it's going to, the current's going to be less, and that's how it knows which direction to take. So to simulate exactly what this unit is going to be looking at, I'm going to put this cover in place so we won't have any kind of like confusion about this here motor, about this air, being, uh, you know, how it's being picked up, because it will pick it up outside here too, where normally we just want it to come through from the return duct, and then come in. So let me get the cover on. All right, the cover is on, it's in place. I have not screwed it down yet. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this here in. And this here fan should start up, because remember, the thermostat is in the on position for the fan. Let's see what it'll do. And I'm gonna, we'll be listening. I'll be quiet so we can listen to see how this thing is gonna start and stop to figure out which rotation it needs to be in. Heard it, heard it one time, it stopped. Heard it again, and it stopped. And now, it sounds like it's, uh, Got itself figured out which way to go. Let's hope it got it the right direction. So I'm gonna let it run for about a minute because in the direction, as I said, after it runs for about a minute, it's pretty much just programmed. So I'll, I'll catch you in the next shot. I came in the house. I'm at one of the registers. I can feel that the air is blowing. Got a little napkin there, and you can see it looks like it picked up on the right direction. Thank goodness. Alright, the unit's been running probably, oh, about five minutes now. And meanwhile, I went ahead and I put all the screws back in and that cover to secure it. Alright, let's go up to the thermostat and let's fire this thing up to get some AC. Okay, moment of truth. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fan on auto. You can see it's 80 degrees in here. And let's turn the compressor on to cool. I could hear it. Condenser fan is running. I can hear the compressor is running. Just checking the vap uh, lines here, refrigeration lines. Yep, that one's warm. And that one's getting cold. Yep. Okay, looks like we got it. Okay, everything is looking good. I just checked it a while ago. We got some cool air coming out of the vents. And that was uh, pretty much a painless operation. It wasn't too bad. Like I said, everything was programmed, pre-programmed on all those taps, so that makes it real nice. No matter, you know, it's not like you got to go back to the dealer to figure out which tap they programmed to get the right one. So that was it really was good. Anyway, now some of you might be thinking, well, hey, 
you know, for that price, three hundred and eighty dollars in the tax, and you know, why not just try to go ahead and fix uh, what's wrong with it? Okay, I'll be willing to do that. I'll send you the board. You get all this crap out of here, this here rubbery epoxy, and and then at that point, now you can reverse engineer it, and then you can figure out the component, and hopefully it ain't like the double E prom which you got to program. But anyway. It would, make, it would make a nice, interesting project to get all this stuff out and reverse engineer it just to see how this thing is wired up. Uh, you can see there's a couple of electrolytic capacitors here. Over here we got some MOSFETs and probably I would suspect that these is passing a lot of current. You know, the motor winding current is passing through these MOSFETs so I suspect one of them is open and shorted but you know, you got to dig all this stuff out of there to get to it. So. With me, you know, it went out, but I'm going to do some research. If this thing goes out, I've already measured this motor up, so I'm going to get, if it happens again with this thing, because it is fairly expensive, I am just going to get a PSC motor, that's permanent split capacitor motor. Put that motor in there with a capacitor and be done with it. And it's a lot cheaper, you know, than replacing this here control module. So, if any of you guys want to know how to troubleshoot to whether it's the motor or the control board or maybe both then I'll put a link uh, uh, at the end of this video and in the description where you can click on it I went through this stuff step by step so you can see exactly how to troubleshoot this that's why I didn't go over all this stuff again so if you want to uh, if you're interested in that then go over there and look at that video I think that's about it and I also I'll put a link to, uh, to supply house you know to this uh, unit uh, they did a real good job I mean I mean I get it is what it is about the price but it you know when I ordered it two days two days it was here and you can see I am sweating and it's hot and uh, so anyway let me wrap this video up and I appreciate you guys watching if you like the video and uh, you want to see some more go ahead and be sure to subscribe and uh, click on the notification bell and then you can be get notifications when I put up another video you guys take care we'll see you in the next one